welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video, well, as you can see, I'm gonna do it standing because I've got little Miss Sleepyhead over here and she hasn't had a good nap yet today and so I just want to make sure she gets a good nap. So I figured this is a way she loves to sleep and she loves it if she's like bouncing and if I'm standing and so I thought kill two birds with one stone. I'll help my girl get a good nap, but I'll also record my YouTube video. <laughs> so, um, this week's video is a Q&A. I posted on Instagram for people to ask questions in my story, and then I got some questions back, and I'm going to answer those. And yeah, just about motherhood, family life, just questions about my life. So. Yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna answer these questions. So first of all, is favorite Eliza moments. And with this one, I thought, well actually the person asked also like favorite videos and photos. So. I will share a few favorite moments just off the top of my head, but then I will also share just some videos and photos of my favorite moments. But my favorite Eliza moments are actually the moments when she, her dad, and I, the three of us are together doing something. Typically we're just moments when we're on the bed, all three of us together, playing with Eliza. Like that's the best. When she's super chatty talking to us and we're talking back to her and it's just the three of us and it's so perfect. Those are my favorite moments, but I mean, she has great moments every day. She's so chatty now and she'll just talk and talk and talk away, which is so cute. I love those moments of her talking. I love feeding her. That's something so special to me that I get to do and so I would include that in my favorite moments of Eliza is feeding Eliza. Um, something else I was thinking about with my favorite moments with her is just different things I've gotten to do with her already, like the firsts with her. I love those firsts moments of like the first time I saw her smile was the most adorable thing and then all the times she smiles after that, just so cute. Or honestly, even the first time I ever saw her, when she came out of me and was crying and, well, was squawking and, and she was just so sweet and so perfect. And that moment was a moment I will always cherish, always, always, of course. And then like her first camping trip, her first time being held by her dad and, and I actually didn't really get to experience that that much because I was under oxygen and in and out of it at the time, but just her first moments of life were perfect. And then also, like her first camping trip, like I said, her first time going to Yellowstone, her first um, Halloween, like all these different firsts we're experiencing. And this whole, the whole first year of her life is gonna be filled with firsts. And I just love that. I will now share some videos and photos a little collage or something of it um, for you to get a little taste of my favorite moments with my girl. I'm waiting for oh, you. You're here, baby girl. You're here. <laughs> oh, oh, she's got something to say. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this bottom side is that What do you got? You got a leaf? A leaf. Hi, baby bear. Are you a cute baby bear? Do you like the falls? Did you see a nice? Do you like the falls? Hi, <laughs> girl. Oh, good job, Eliza. There you go. He gets bigger. You're floating. Whoa! 
So then the next question was to name all of my exes. I actually don't have any exes. I, in high school, I never dated seriously. I dated a lot. I went on tons of dates, had lots of fun with guys. I was a huge flirt and I had a lot of fun, but there, every time I felt like I was getting close to a point of maybe dating a guy, I would definitely jump and run away because I have this commitment struggle issue and actually Sam's the first guy I have ever in my life felt not f afraid, I guess. <laughs> He's the first guy in my life I ever felt like not commitment issues or not committal fear, non-committal fear. I don't know what the word is, but Basically, I wasn't afraid of committing to him and I wasn't afraid of going after it and dating him. And actually, I realized a lot of it is because when I would start to get close to a guy, all of a sudden I'd start to like nitpick and think about all these different things I didn't like. But with Sam, I genuinely could not do that with him. When I was at the point where I get with all the other guys and I got to that point, I couldn't nitpick, I didn't want to nitpick, and I actually was really interested in, and he fascinated me and I just wanted to learn more and and experience more with him and, and of him and I just wanted to be his girl. And so that kind of started a whole new situation for me that I had never felt before. And obviously now he's my husband and I can see why. Anyways, so there's all my exes. <laughs> I have none and I am actually pretty happy about that. I'm pretty happy I don't feel like I've spent my days um, obsessing over or worrying about guys that ended up not being the important guy in my life. And so yeah, and Sam was never my ex. We never broke up when we were dating so I really don't have any exes. And the next question is how long have you been married? And then they said advice, any advice for marriage, I guess. And so Sam and I have been married for just over two years, it's actually like two years and three months now. I would say the biggest thing of advice with marriage is actually two things. First of all, this is something I've learned or discovered more. Girls tend to act the same. And that is, we like drama, right? We like to be mad at our husbands or at our significant others. We like reasons to be mad at them. And sometimes when we can't find a reason or a good reason, we just grab at anything and we decide to be mad when we're actually not mad at them. We just want to be mad because most of the time, I think it's because of stress or feeling like you're not in control of a situation. But I don't think, I think most of the time, your frustrations or the, the girl's frustrations don't have anything to do with her husband, but with some things she needs to work out within herself. And so then the girl, instead of like figuring it out that she needs to work through something and working through it, instead she just tends to take it out on her husband. She wants the drama. She wants to fuel her fire somewhere and her husband's the easiest place to do it because there's little things that he'll do that will bother you, of course. Every single person in your life will have little things that will bother you. And of course, since your husband is the person you're closest to and you're with every day, yeah, there's gonna be things. But that's the issue is we tend to decide that it's worth it to nitpick at those things and to be mad for little things when it really doesn't matter. So my advice here, and I'm saying this from personal experience, I realized this early on in my marriage, like really early on, that, oh, this is something I do and this is not something I want to do or I want Sam to have to deal with for the rest of our lives. And so 
I've worked hard on it ever since I realized that, which was like honestly within the first five months of our marriage, I realized it and I decided to really work hard on it and I have been ever since. And I've seen a significant difference in the way I feel towards Sam and the way he acts towards me and trusts me and just our relationship in general. Because I choose to not nitpick and just be mad at him because I want to be mad or because I'm feeling like I can't control the situation so I've got to be upset. Instead of doing that, I choose to simply let go of the little things and just love him and just figure out what's going on within me and move on because it really doesn't matter. What I have shifted to doing and have loved is simply saying, hey, I'm just feeling a little needy right now and I would love for you to just sit and talk to me for a minute. And of course, when I say that, he is more than willing and he puts his phone away or he puts he stops whatever he's doing and he just listens to me and lets me talk. Us women want our husbands to read our minds and when they don't, we want to be mad at them. And us women want to just be mad at our husbands sometimes. When, when there hasn't been a good little spat in a while, you just want to create one. And it's not good. <laughs> it's not worth it. And so that's where you've got to step outside of yourself and be willing to take a step back, think about what you're feeling and why you're feeling that way. And then instead of being mad at your spouse, maybe expressing to them, hey, I'm feeling a little anxious or I'm feeling kind of down or maybe even I'm feeling a little bothered and just talk to him and then tell him, you know, how you're feeling. And he will most likely, you know, really like good guys, they want to listen, they want to help you, and they want you to be happy. And so he will, at least with Sam, when I just talk to him and just say, I'm feeling this way, rather than being angry and making sure he knows I'm upset but not willing to talk about it. <laughs> um, instead, when I communicate, then he wants to communicate back. And instead of us having like an argument over something or feeling like we're mad at one another, we talk through whatever I'm going through and he helps me feel better about what I'm going through. He helps me come to a conclusion about it. And I'm not kidding, 90% of the time, it has nothing to do with Sam. 90% of the time it's within myself, something I'm going through personally that I need to work through. But because I chose to talk to my spouse rather than just be mad at him, I get to a beautiful conclusion and I can move on from it and feel happy and better and we don't have to have this argument in order for me to get the drama in, you know? So that's just a big, I know I said a lot there, but that's a big, big thing that I think is so important to learn and every healthy marriage, like if you want to have a good marriage, you need to learn this and <laughs> the sooner you learn it, the more you work on it and the, you know, the sooner you start working on it and want to improve it, oh, the happier, more beautiful and powerful and strong your marriage will be right from the get-go or sooner. And so, yeah, that's my big advice I'd say. Really quick now, because that was a long one. The other piece of advice I would say is to make time for your spouse. To make sure that for both of you, spending time together is a priority. That's like with Sam and I, we do a weekly date night. And right now, that weekly date night, it includes Eliza, but we still make it happen. Make time for your spouse and make time for intimacy with your spouse. That is so important and it's so good. And I'm not just talking about sex. I'm talking about cuddling and, and holding each other and just kissing each other and hugging and just, just touch each other, just like be intimate and talk intimately, talk to each other deeply, lovingly, powerfully, be with each other. Don't just live together, be together, do things together, be a couple, be with each other. That's my advice. And someone asked, do you know any cute friends for me? Well, I have a lot of cute friends, but most of my friends are married because that's kind of the stage I'm in. I just have a bunch of married friends now or in relationships, I guess, but 
So, and also, I don't really know who this is that said this. So, sorry. And then another person said, who are you trying to get with? Um, well, I love my husband. I want to get with him. Don't have to try, but <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> and then someone said, are you a stay-at-home mom full-time? Um, kind of. I am definitely stay-at-home mom. I am home with her, caring for her all day, every day. That is my role. Yes, Sam's the one who works and goes to school, and he is working hard. But I also work. I have my job, and I work, but I get to work from home, and it's my own hours, you know? I don't. I have a very flexible schedule, flexible hours. I just kind of try to get a certain amount of hours in each week but it doesn't have to be a certain like set time to a set time every day. It's when I can get it in. And so it's a huge blessing, especially being a first time mom with a brand new baby. It makes life so much better, so much easier for me and for Sam that I'm able to have a job like that where I can be a stay at home mom full time. Like basically I am a full time stay at home mom and and it's really really nice but that being said sam is an incredible dad and even though i'm at home caring for her all day every day i say that but really it's not all day every day sam takes her every day he spends so much time with her as much as he can honestly when he's home he wants to hang out with her he wants to be with her when she goes to the bathroom and he's home he'll He'll take her from me and go change her bum or he'll, when he's home and it's bath night, he likes to give her the bath or he'll put her to bed like every other night we take turns and he seriously is the most involved, loving, supportive father I have ever known. I mean, my dad was also extremely involved, extremely loving, right? But, but basically what I'm saying here is Sam is an incredible dad. He is the best dad to this girl and I could not have a better person or more wonderful partner to raise our child with. And so yes, I'm a stay-at-home mom, full-time basically. I have my job. Sam is definitely the one who brings in the big money. He's the one who is working, providing for our family. But I would say we are pretty equal in our parts of raising Eliza and we're pretty equal in our parts of, of taking care of our home and our finances. Obviously, he makes more money, but I would say for the most part, our roles are pretty equal. <laughs> and, and not equal as in the exact same role, but equal as in we, we put up the same amount of time, energy, and effort into our family. And I think that's so important. And I'm so grateful for a husband who's, who's that way. And the next question is... <laughs> Someone just, that's right, someone just said we should talk more, and I, again, I don't know who you are because this was on the link that is anonymous, and so, um, I don't know who you are, but you can definitely message me, reach out to me, and we can talk more. <laughs> then someone asked, why did you name your daughter Eliza? And I love this question, and I'd love to answer. So, Eliza... First of all, is a family name. Her name's Eliza D, and it's 100% a family name. Eliza is the name of my, is my, my sister's middle name. So I have one sister. Her middle name is Eliza, and she was named after our something great grandma, who was also an Eliza. And I love the idea of a family name. I love my sister, and so I thought, I think Eliza's the perfect name for her. But on top of that, when Sam and I found out she was a girl, like that same week, I think that day or the day after, Sam's mom called us and we were talking to her about name ideas, and she just said, how about Eliza? What do you think about Eliza? And when she said that, that was before I, I really, like really thought about Eliza. I had thought about it a little bit before, but this was the first time I really thought about it. And when she said that, Sam and I both looked at each other and we said, I really like that name. And that is the first girl name that we had thought about that came up that we both loved. And so that was another bonus 
And so then we had that name there. And the whole time after we found out she was a girl, that I was pregnant, we were trying to think of other names, but could not. And every time we just go back to how much we loved Eliza and loved the reason for it, loved that it's a family name, loved everything about it. And then I read about my ancestor, Eliza, who my sister was named after. And she was just such an amazing, strong-willed, extremely kind, powerful, um, adventurous woman. And so I thought, how cool is it that my sister's named after such an incredible woman? And how cool would it be if my daughter was named after that same incredible woman and my sister, you know? And so there's just two very important women in my life. Um, one, obviously I never met, but she is my ancestor and she's family, she's blood. And I love that and I feel a connection to her. And then the second is my sister, who's obviously related to me and I've obviously met, I've spent my whole life with. She's my best friend and it just seemed perfect. And so yeah, we, Sam and I both loved it so much and we decided to name her Eliza. And then D is my middle name, which is also part of my mom's name, and so, which was actually my great uncle's name. So my grandpa, his one brother is named, his name is D, and so my grandparents, when my mom was born, named her Patty D after him, and then my mom named me Kylie D after her, and so now Eliza is Eliza D after me. So that name has become a family name. Um, few generations now which I think is amazing but yeah so that's her name and that's why it's her name and I think it's perfect so the last question is about my birth and they asked how come you didn't go natural because I know I talked quite a bit before giving birth about how I really wanted to go natural and I really thought I could do it and so now I will share why I didn't um it was excruciatingly painful and I could not do it. I mean, I tried, but I, first of all, did not prepare well enough in advance. I didn't really do anything to help teach my brain how to control my fear. And um, the whole situation, I just was so anxious the whole night before and then the day of. I was so anxious and it really did make it extremely hard for me to focus on dealing with the pain and on focusing on letting that pain go and just letting my body work and do what it needed to do. So at the point, you know, by the time it got so bad that I had to get my epidural, that I said I wanted one, it was so bad that I was like, tears were coming out down my face. I couldn't talk or do anything really during the contraction. I just kind of had held myself there and I tried so hard to just get through it, but each one just got harder and harder and I could not imagine like pushing a baby out with all that pain going on and I just thought in my head I really felt so strong you just need to get the epidural it's gonna make the whole experience better easier and it's gonna keep you safe and healthy and alive and honestly it did because then I got the epidural and ended up um having the most beautiful birth experience, I felt like I could really enjoy the experience and I could really like be present and mentally aware of what was going on. And pushing was so incredible. I loved, that was my favorite part of the whole experience was pushing because I was so excited to meet my baby, so ready to hold her. And it was just so incredible and such an intimate experience with my husband and nurse and our midwife. And so, that was special for me. And then also afterwards when I hemorrhaged, the fact that they had the epidural going so I didn't have to feel the pain of all that they were doing in me because they had to go up in there and, and stitch up my cervix and they had to like put a bunch, a bunch of um, swabs or cloth or something up in there to help the bleeding stop. And so basically that would have been extremely painful right after giving birth to then have all of that happening in me if I had to feel it all, like feel the pain of it all, you know? So it ended up being a huge blessing that I got the epidural. And the reason I did was because it was so painful and I physically could not go on. I mentally was not letting myself 
go on and so I just had to do it but who knows maybe in the future I'll try again natural my goal is every time to go as long as I can without the epidural so every time you know if I get the epidural every time just I'll at least try to go as long as possible without it and then get it because I do like the <laughs> as weird as it sounds I did like the experience of feeling the contractions and feeling the pain but of course in the moment it was so bad that I could not I could not do it but now that it's three months later <laughs> I have a little bit um, I've forgotten the pain a little bit and so I feel like I can say that but yeah so I will I will do what I did this time of going as long as I can without it and then when I need it or if I need it I'll take it but yeah I had a beautiful epidural experience it was amazing and the whole birth was amazing but yeah so yeah those are the questions thank you so much for sending them in I love answering your questions I really do and I love getting to just talk about my life and it feels fun to answer the questions I think because it feels fun to think oh they're interested in this aspect of my life so it's kind of fun to share but anyways thank you so much for watching and for being here I hope you enjoy this video I hope it gives you good insight and um, have a great day thanks bye Thank you.